Good morning, students. Today we are going to study about the one compartment open model extravascular administration. Now, when the drug is given by one uh, by the extravascular administration, we are talking about three routes, three possible routes: oral, rectal, or the intramuscular routes. This means the extravascular administration. Now, when a drug is given by extravascular routes, absorption becomes a prerequisite. That is. Absorption is going to happen as compared to the intravenous route where we were not considering absorption. See, out of the four steps A, B, M, and E, in intravenous route absorption was not required as the drug was directly entering into the bloodstream into distribution. But over here, absorption will happen. So now uh, in case of extravascular administration, the drug absorption and elimination may follow either zero order or it may follow first order. So we can consider here two cases, it may be zero order or first order. Now the general equation for extravascular administration will be considering dx by dt as the rate of change in the amount of drug in the body at any given time t, dx by dt is equal to dx ev, ev stands for extravascular quantity minus dx e by dt. Now the first term over here dx ev by dt is referring to the rate of absorption and the second dx e by dt is referring to the rate of elimination. So this is pretty much similar that rate in minus rate out or the rate of absorption minus the rate of elimination. See, we have three cases. The first case is the absorption phase. In the absorption phase, the rate of absorption is higher than the rate of elimination, which means that dx ev by dt is more than dx e by dt. Second case is the Cmax. Cmax means the peak plasma. Remember the curve. In the, the peak point C max, at the, this point dx ev by dt is equal to dx e by dt, which means the rate of absorption is equal to the rate of elimination. Now, the third case is the post absorption phase where elimination starts. In the post absorption phase, what will happen? dx ev by dt is going to be less than dx e by dt which means the rate of absorption now is less than the rate of elimination so for any typical extravascular administration we are going to see three phases first is going to be the absorption phase then the cmax and the post absorption phase now considering two cases let us consider if case one if the rate of absorption follows a zero order process. It follows a zero order process. So what will be the pattern like? Let us see the drug at extravascular site. From here it goes to the blood and tissues from where it is eliminated. Now, From the drug at extravascular site to the blood tissues, this is going to follow R0 and in the elimination, we have elimination rate constant Ke. So in case of extravascular administration, if the rate of absorption follows zero order, the pattern is going to be similar to IV infusion, which we have already covered. You can correlate with the previous videos, with the previous section that this flowchart is similar to the one we had done in IV infusion, which means that extravascular shows a similar pattern to IV infusion if the rate of absorption follows zero order. Now, let us consider the second case where the rate of absorption and elimination will be of first order. What happens in this case? This case is more important to us. Now, again, considering the drug at extravascular site. 
it enters into the blood and other body tissues from where it is eliminated. Similar situation, but the difference will be that since this is following the first order process, over here we have to place a rate constant Ka and here we have to place a rate constant Ke. The difference is in this case of zero order we had placed R0, R0, R0 which was not significant. Here we are placing Ka which is going to be significant. We will have to determine the value of Ka and Ke both. In this case we were determining only the value of Ka through a semi-log plot. So this is the basic difference between extravascular administration and the intravenous cases. Over here we can see if it is first order then we have to find out both Ka and Ke. There are two parameters which are going to be important now. Absorption rate constant Ka, elimination rate constant Ke. Now let us try to see the derivation of this. When we just have a recap of this, we have two cases, zero order and first order. Now, consider the equation that the rate of change in drug dx by dt is going to be equal to dx ev by dt minus dx e by dt. Again, this is the rate of absorption, this is the rate of elimination. Okay, now on differentiation. On differentiation of this equation, what do we get? x is equal to Ka xa minus Ke x. Ka is the absorption rate constant, Ke is the elimination rate constant, and xa is the amount remaining to be absorbed. Please remember this xa is the amount remaining to be absorbed. Now, on integration, and applying limits to this equation, what do we get? See, we will get in this equation now, we get <coughs> Ka F X0 upon Ka minus Ke in brackets e to the power minus Ke T minus e to the power minus Ka T. This is the value of x. Now, converting this x into concentration terms by using the expression x is equal to vdc, we get this equation is converted into form c is equal to ka f x0 divided by vd ka minus ke in brackets we have e to the power same expression minus ka t. So this becomes a general expression, a final general expression for extravascular administration which may be oral, rectal or intravascular in case the drug is following first order absorption or elimination. This is the general expression C is equal to this Ka F X naught VD Ka minus Ke along with this expression. Now one more thing, what is this F? F is the fraction of drug absorbed systematically. Remember, F is the fraction of drug absorbed systematically. Why are we including this term in case of extravascular administration? Because in case of IV, as we have studied, the bioavailability was 100%, but in case of extravascular, it is not going to be equal to 100%. We will have to determine the value of F or the amount of drug which actually enters the systemic circulation. So this was the general discussion about extravascular administration. In the next class, we are going to learn about how to determine the pharmacokinetic parameters from extravascular administration. Thank you. Keep studying.